Hi, Coin6 Meteorologist Josh Kozart here with your latest weather update. We've got a lot to unpack as a Coin6 weather alert goes into place starting tomorrow, and that will eventually take us into the rest of the week, Friday. Finally starting to see some relief from the excessive heat, the wildfire potential, as we really start to kind of work our way uh, deeper into the weekend and eventually in the next week, seeing a big change up as well. So again, if you're just now joining us on this Coin6 Coin Now special edition live on web. Uh, you can ask your questions. This is going to be a conversation between us. If you have any questions about the active weather, that is going to be taking aim at much of the Pacific Northwest. This is the place to do it. it. Gives us a little extra time to actually kind of dissect and break down exactly what we anticipate to see here in the coming days. So again, that Coin 6 weather alert, it goes into place starting tomorrow. That will take us into Friday as well as triple digit heat once again makes a quick return to the Pacific Northwest. And that, in turn, will be increasing that wildfire potential across our area as well. So we've already seen the wildfire smoke building across uh, much of our region. A lot of fires still burning just east of the Cascades into the central, south central, southeastern sections, some of which have even started within the past week. So don't let the cool and wet weather deceive you. It has been a nice change of pace for us. It's helped reduce the wildfire threat over the past several weeks. But now we are going back to the heat, back to the dry conditions, and that is only adding fuel to the potential fire of new potential wildfires starting and spreading rapidly during this hot, hazy, and potentially dangerous next couple of days. So you can see the smoke. It's already pushing its way back into parts of the I-5 quarter of the coast range as well, something that we need to be mindful of. And that's exactly what the National Weather Service is doing. Now, towards the south central, southeastern sections of our state, that is where a wildfire, or I should say, an air quality advisory is in effect. Poor air quality remains. So, let me your time spent outside if you are planning on doing any outdoor activities out towards the eastern half of the Beaver States. Now, the National Weather Service has painted a mosaic of colors for us here across the Pacific Northwest. Let's go ahead and break down exactly what all of them mean. So first off, the excessive heat warning, that goes into effect starting tomorrow. It's going to take us all the way into Friday. That means we could potentially see triple-digit heat once again return to parts of the Pacific Northwest. And then even some of the coast range, the high terrain of the Cascades points east, even along the coastline, also expecting a heat advisory getting underway again on Thursday and Friday for us. So again, limiting your time spent outside is going to be ideal, especially if you have any outdoor activities because heat-related illnesses are going to be at an all-time high. The temperatures that we're expecting to see over the next several days could potentially be some of the hottest air that we have felt so far this summer season. And yes, we are in the month of September, a month that typically brings us a bit of a cooling trend. So I had mentioned some of those east winds that could potentially rolling their way out of the Cascades. That's where the fire threat is starts to increase along with the high heat. So all of that kind of combines to dry out our landscape rapidly. It doesn't matter how much rain we've seen over the past week, two weeks, which in the grand scheme of things has not been a lot. So that's why we have that higher threat. National Weather Service out of Portland issuing that fire weather watch for the Northern Willamette Valley. So that's going to include places like Salem, Wilsonville, Portland, Vancouver, all points in between from Clark County down to Marion County and quite frankly all of the I-5 corridor has the potential to see the same conditions of an increased threat of wildfires potentially starting and it doesn't necessarily even mean something like a cigarette butt out of a car window. It can be combustible. It just starts to catch fire because it's that hot, that dry, and that windy it can really cause uh, quite the scene. This is, of course, also getting underway along the high terrain of the Cascades. The foothills of the Cascades are really kind of including parts of the Mount Hood area. And that's all because of those east winds that are expecting to pick up. And this is where the rapid fire start has the potential to increase. So we are not out of wildfire season just yet. We still got about a month, month and a half to two months still to go. We got to wait for those fall rains to really become more persistent, the temperatures to drop significantly as well. And that doesn't usually happen until we get to about the middle and end of October. So still well in the heart of wildfire season. If you think back to the 2020 wildfires, that happened on Labor Day, the start of September, all the possibility uh, of happening as we kind of have the perfect setup over the next several days to see just that. So 
again, that weather alert, it is in place for us as we continue to work our way through the uh, first week, really, of the summer or end of summer, the unofficial end of summer happening on Labor Day. So right now you're taking a live look out over downtown Portland. That is where hazy conditions can still be found even at this hour. And I'm just going to be checking up uh, here on Facebook and on YouTube if you have any questions, comments, or concerns as we continue to see uh, the high heat and the fire threat still building across our area. Not seeing any questions or comments just yet, but feel free to comment below. We are also live on TikTok, uh, all of the different avenues for you to get the latest information as this threat continues. So, uh, again, a beautiful live look out over I-5, the Tillicum Crossing, Ross Island Bridge, all over the Willamette River. Folks, it is 721 right now. Our temperature is still hovering just shy of 90 degrees after we managed to climb up into the low 90s earlier today. So the heat, it is still here. And you'll notice that over the past several weeks, we've seen daytime highs in the upper 60s once or twice. But our overnight lows tonight as we move past the midnight are not expecting to dip below the 70 degree mark. That's where we could potentially break a whole new slew of records which we'll dive into in just a moment. But overall, it is hot, and it's also hazy out there. That's where we're seeing our air quality suffering through parts of the I-5 corridor, Salem falling back to that moderate level, and also seeing much of Eastern Lane, Douglas County, parts of Deschutes County out towards Bend, all picking up on that moderate, if not even the unhealthy for sensitive groups category because of all of the fires that continue to burn. You can kind of see the haze uh, just below me here. That's where we are likely going to be picking up on that nice red sunset, which sunset tonight is at 741 with in the next 20 minutes or so. So keep a close eye on that. And the wildfire smoke, it's going to continue to funnel its way back into our area. So the moderate air quality that we are picking up in parts of Portland right now has the potential to worsen here in the coming hours. You can kind of see this uh, timeline. So for tomorrow morning, seeing just about the same hazy conditions that we're experiencing right now, expecting it to become even worse by the afternoon hours. This is a double-edged sword. It could potentially be beneficial as far as those hot temperatures go, dropping them ever so slightly because when you have all of the particulates in the atmosphere, it's able to reflect a lot of that heat that's being beamed down onto us. So if that's the case, we might struggle to actually hit 101 degrees tomorrow. That's our forecasted high for Portland. We could potentially be a little bit cooler than that. On the flip side, it will likely be decreasing our air quality. So overall, you do not want to be spending time out in these hot and hazy conditions uh, for a prolonged amount of time if you don't have to be. Let's continue to put it into motion. That's where we expect to see some clearing, but still very thick and dense as far as the surface smoke goes over the foothills of the Cascades. The Cascades themselves seen some improvements along the Willamette Valley, but still expecting to hold on to those hazy conditions really kind of through the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, we start to see some improvements as we get that onshore flow. Now, take a look. These are our current temperatures up into the upper 80s. Hillsboro still 92. We're at about the sunset hour. So just truly remarkable high heat still staying over much of the Pacific Northwest. This is going to be a trend that we continue to see over the next several days. Our 24-hour temperature difference has us up anywhere from 10 to 15, close to 20 degrees. And those numbers are just going to become even larger as we move our way through the next several days. So what about the heat? Let's break it down for you. 96 to 102, even maybe 103 for places like Salem. All a possibility. Thursday, Friday, yes, even the coast getting in on the high heat. Upper 70s, upper 80s. Today we've already felt the heat. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up for you uh, just so you can really kind of get a good idea of where our temperatures went today. On average, Portland's afternoon temperatures should be right around 80 degrees uh, for this fourth day of the month. Look at that, 91, 10 degrees warmer for the I-5 quarter. Look at the coast, Astoria, almost 90 degrees when our average is about 69 for the start of September. So a 20 degree surplus of where we need to be for this time of year. So uh, this is a direct cause of climate change, the unpredictable weather patterns. Let's hope that maybe this is our last and, and final hurrah of the summer season as the excessive heat just continues to build across our area. Now, I do want to take a moment to talk about those winds. That's the concerning part of all of this for me. You really see by the mid-morning hours, 9 a.m., 
north, northeast winds, about 17 miles per hour. We continue to see them out of the northeast. That's where we will likely be climbing back up to about 24 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour, all the possibility through the I-5 corridor. That's where we will likely start to see some of those winds pick up. It's less than ideal to see them come up and over the Cascades. You might be familiar with the term downslope wind. We've been talking about them extensively here on Coin6. We've got an article up on Coin.com right now that you can kind of dive into a little bit deeper. But the downslope winds, they're the winds that come up and over the Cascades. They cool once they get to the top of, say, Mount Hood. And then as they descend into the foothills, into the valley locations, they warm up, they speed up, and they dry out. That's the perfect combination for starting and spreading wildfires rapidly. We've also got another story uh, from Joel Jones on coin.com right now that kind of breaks down what PGE is expecting to do if these winds are expected to get as high or even higher as forecasted, again, right around 25 miles per hour. They have the potential to do the rolling blackouts where they shut off power to prevent any maybe down trees on those power lines that start and spread the wildfires. And that's exactly what we saw back in 2020. It was Labor Day. The winds came howling out of the Cascades, east winds, and that brought down several limbs, started from the power lines, and it was just a snowball effect. The big difference from 2020 to this year is the drought situation. So that is at least on our side. You can see here that we had extreme drought over parts of Coos, Douglas County, down towards the south, south central, out towards uh, the central regions of the state as well. That was 2020. So that meant our landscape was bone dry. It, just off the top of my head, I was down in Eugene during that time uh, when the wildfires kind of tore through on Labor Day. So it impacted all of western Oregon. Uh, all of the I-5 quarter. We had some of the worst air quality in the world reported during that because of the east winds that just kept sending the wildfire smoke into our direction. If I'm remembering correct, I think maybe we were up to like 50 or, or 70 consecutive days with not a single drop of rain. It was near record-breaking, if not breaking records. Again, just off the top of my mind. At least this go-around we actually have picked up on a little bit of moisture. We've seen those breaks in the heat. We've seen the cool days. We've seen highs in the upper 60s. Yes, daytime highs in the upper 60s. We might struggle to get to that come tomorrow morning, but at least our drought situation is significantly better. Much of the I-5 quarter, the northern Cascades, where we're really honing in on this potential threat, has abnormally dry conditions. That's technically not in drought, but close to it, not where we like to be. As much of the central eastern sections are under that moderate drought, it's out towards uh, the south central, southeastern sections that are under the severe drought. So at least we have that on our side compared to where we were in 2020. That's the positive. What's not so positive is the high heat. We're talking about triple digit numbers possible for Thursday. That could potentially break our record of 1944. So over 60 years since we have seen temperatures this hot, it could also be uh, one of our latest 100-degree temperatures ever recorded in the month of September. It was 105. That's our hottest September temperature ever. But 101 ties the 1944 record for the second hottest temperature ever recorded this month. Hey, no Mother Nature could just throw us a curveball and send us close to that 105. I don't think that that's out of the realm of possibility, especially with those east winds that warm and dry. Again, it all just kind of plays into... Will we have that wildfire smoke sitting over our head? That's going to be the big determining factor for us. Come Friday, 99 degrees. Not much better for us. Still quite toasty out there. Saturday, finally a bit of a relief from the heat. I do believe we'll still hold on to a bit of that smoke and haze as the east winds slow to stay persistent up in the upper layers of the atmosphere. All possibility. Now it's Sunday that we finally start to fall back into the upper 80s. Yes, that's still well above our average of 80 degrees. And kind of backtracking to Friday, still likely to break a record last set back in 1958, where we hit 97, 99, that expected high. But by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I think we'll start to get a little bit more of an onshore flow. That's going to help to clear out the wildfire smoke, bring in that onshore flow, help to cool us off from the Pacific Ocean, 
So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We really just need to make it through Thursday and Friday with no new fire starts to really reduce that potential. That's what our hope is. And it takes all of us to really kind of prevent the start and spread of those fires. So being mindful and staying weather aware. That's why the Coin 6 weather alert is in place as we move through the next several days. Now, uh, whoops, jumped a little bit too far forward. I, I want to talk about those other records, the records of those early morning lows. You kind of see them there on the brief seven day. We'll get back to that. 68 tonight, tomorrow morning, 68 again Friday morning. These could potentially be some of the warmest early morning lows. So the coldest part of the day is typically right around sunrise. That's when our temperatures are the coldest. 68 degrees could potentially be the warmest cold temperature we've ever seen for Thursday and Friday. We were typically back at about 66, the old record of 2017, both Thursday, 65, Friday, 2017. So 2017 was definitely a warm one for us. As far as the early morning lows went, likely seeing that reflected in the afternoon highs as well. But it's just downright hot across our area. And that's something that we're going to continue to see with very little relief from the heat, even during the overnight hours. So that's what's going to be a, uh, such a difficulty for people who don't have AC, who are unable to find shelter, which Multnomah County is opening up some of its uh, heat shelters, cooling centers. You can read up more on those locations at coin.com right now. At least we finally get back to about 61 Monday and Tuesday when our average Early morning low should be hovering right around 57 degrees. Let's break down what we expect to see for tomorrow. The I-5 corridor, low 70s for Newport, comfortable. Travel along 101, Astoria, close to 90 degrees. Keep in mind, we should be right around 69 for this time of year. So if you do want to break from the heat, you want to escape it from the valley areas, just head west. That's what we always tend to do. And uh, cool off along the beach, although it's going to feel like the summer season or the heart of the summer season. Yes, we're technically still in summer, but meteorological fall started back on September 1st. Labor Day, typically the unofficial end to the summer season. So Mother Nature is just saying, ah, let's forget about the calendar. Let me just give you what I have left to offer. The I-5 quarter, definitely seen Mother Nature swinging our way with triple digits. Salem 103, a likelihood. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hazy. It's going to be breezy out there with that northeast wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, sustained gusts potentially nearing about 20 to 25 miles per hour, all a possibility. That coin six weather alert still remaining in place for much of the Pacific Northwest as the high heat builds out towards the east. Madras at 98, Bend at 97. Just look at the Dalles, 101 also expecting that high. Hood River, hot, 97, close to 90 degrees for government camp. So any leftover snow that's on Mount Hood, gone likely going to be melting within the next several days but september sometimes brings us a nice extra little dose of the moisture in the form of snowfall so something we can all look forward to here's a closer look at that seven day forecast again we've highlighted thursday and friday as those coin six weather alerts that's where we have the greatest potential to see wildfire activity that's where our greatest concern is Hopefully not seeing anything like that, but we got to be mindful. Overall, it's going to be hot outside, so we want to make sure that we're taking frequent breaks. I know I've gotten a few reports from people online uh, saying that, hey, you know, my kid's school has an early release. Check up with your school district. See if that's a possibility as some buildings struggle to keep everything cool, although they are trying to work diligently to, to keep fans running overnight. But, boy, when you get to 101 in the – peak of the afternoon three four o'clock it's hard to keep any space cool 99 degrees for friday and then finally the weekend comes not only do we get off work and school for many of us but we also get that cool down 93 for saturday sunday at 87 a nice welcome change of pace the start of next week so now we're into the second week of september we start to see the clouds increasing we start to see our temperatures cooling back 76 degrees for tuesday wednesday 73 fall-like conditions maybe seeing a nice lady raindrop or two all in the realm of possibility that would definitely be nice for us to see once again return but we just got to make it through these next two days the high heat it's here to stay at least through then and then we finally get to cool back of course you can stay up to date always on coin.com 
We'll also have an update on the CW tonight, The 10. It's our brand new show. Anthony Costura and I will be giving you live updates on the fire situation, the heat. We break it down for you in a quick, easy to understand 30 minute show. Join us again, The 10 on the CW. And then, of course, our legacy station, Coin 6, where we have the 11 o'clock newscast. That's going to give you the latest updates there. So be sure to tune in. We'll try to keep you as up to date as we possibly can as the high heat once again returns to the Pacific Northwest. Triple digit heat on the way for Thursday, potentially Friday, as the wildfire potential remains. Thanks for joining us on this Coin Now special edition. We'll see you on the other side.